So this particular Superior MX-70 is close to three years old now. And I'll explain why in a minute. But since I left Preston Innovations, am I going to change? Am I going to change brands? If you want to find out, stick around and I'll explain what I'm thinking when it comes to my pole choice. So in that little description, I mentioned that this pole was close to three years old. And I can hear you all saying, Joe, they've only been out a couple of years. How can this possibly be three years old? Well, this is the first ever X70. This is the pole that we used to do all the media with when I was at Press Innovations. We got these poles, there was one of each. Um, it was the final sample. We tested them and tested them, tested them. I've actually got the one with no graphics on as well uh, that I use as a backup. Uh, but this was the first ever one and I've still got it. Um, Preston Innovations kindly let me keep it when I moved on. Now, the, the reason I say it's three years old, it's the, like I say, for a good 10 months or so, we were filming with this pole before we even teased them. So this pole has been through the mill, trust me, we've used it. Des has used it, Lee, Kerry used it. Um, all the guys have been using this pole, this actual pole, not just the X70, this actual pole. And then I've obviously had it for a couple of years as my loyal servant as well. And so I think it probably puts me in a good place to talk about it. Um, and I can talk about it with total honesty. I've got no, I've got no ties to press innovations anymore. Um, so I think it's a good time to do a little update on what I believe is a fantastic pole. So the X70, uh, I'm not actually 100% sure. I'll put it in the, in the, on the screen now about the price now because it may have gone up, I'm not sure. Uh, everything in life is going up, isn't it, at the moment? But when, we, uh, when I first got this pole, they were just under 1,800 quid, if I remember rightly. And a lot of you were probably surprised at the time when I went for this over the more expensive flagship model, the X90. I said at the time, it just suited me better, and I stick by that. Um, I felt like the X90 felt heavy, um, it was undoubtedly very stiff and strong, but for me, I prefer a pole with a bit more action. I prefer a pole that's lighter and like really well balanced. Um, I've always been a fan of dial poles for that very reason. I, I often think, yeah, don't get me wrong, the Air, Air Z Pro, um, the very, very top end ones are incredibly stiff, but I always think I've always used Tournament Pros. Um, I had the very, very first Tournament Pro, uh, the Spectron, the original Spectron, and they always felt really well balanced. Um, without being the stiffest, if that makes sense. But there were poles you could do ev everything with. And I, as soon as we got the sample of this, that's exactly what I thought it felt like. It felt very Daiwa-esque, and I can, I can say that now. Um, it's not that they've copied the mandrel or anything, it's just how it felt. It felt like a really well-balanced pole that perhaps wasn't the stiffest. Um, and I stand by that. And that's fine by me, because if I need a super stiff pole, um, I'll use a short kit and a short three in this. Um, and oftentimes that means fishing up against islands at 13, 40 metres. Rarely am I fishing 16 metres up against an island. So if I need a super stiff pole, then I just shove the short three in and fish a short kit, or even a short three in a normal kit, and I've got a pole that is more than stiff enough. But for my all round fishing, I just use this pole. I think it's fantastic. The caveat to that is I don't do a lot of 16 metre fishing. Actually, the Barbie Banks venue that I've been going to a bit opens me up to a bit more 16 metre fishing, to be fair. But on the whole, most of my fishing is, like Shearsby Valley, there's a 30 metre pole limit, for example. Barbie Banks, like I say, Makings. A lot of my fishing is 40 and a half metres and under. So the performance at 16 metres isn't at the very top of my list of priorities. I want something that I can just fish with that I think is light and well balanced. And this pole is exactly that, whilst being relatively affordable um, so strengths and weaknesses the main weakness I'm going to start with the negatives and then we'll go into the, the positives the main weakness but I've like I say grown to live with it is performance at 16 meters it's very good at 16 meters don't get me wrong but obviously when my peers and the anglers around me have all got flagship poles you can tell the difference obviously their poles are a thousand two thousand three thousand pounds more expensive in a lot of cases now so this, the performance is going to be different um, 
That being said, for this bit of 16 meter work that I do, this pole has been great. Um, it's not as stiff. But one thing I will say is, in a wind, for example, I can often hold this at 16 metres when anglers with um, super stiff poker style poles can't because obviously there's a bit of give in the pole. So there's pros and cons to that stiffness. Obviously, if you want something that is poker stiff, you've got to spend a lot more money. If that is important to you, then there's no getting, getting around that. But if you're like me, you only do a bit of 16 metre work, I think this is more than adequate. And certainly at 13 and 14 and a half, I've never felt the need to have a pole that's any stiffer. Uh, so the one negative is at 16 meters, it loses its performance when compared to a flagship model. It's going to, it's an 1800 quid pole, not a 4,000, 5,000 pound pole. In the X90's case, to be fair to it, just over 3,000 pounds. So that's the negative. So let's talk about the positives. The price for me is the big one. I. I I must admit, it's been a while since I've been to any pole alleys or anything. I've kind of, because new fish aren't into poles, I'm more than happy with what I've got. Um, so I don't, I haven't compared it to the Matrix MTX4, for example, which I believe is a similar price, or even Daiwa's poles in that price range, the Maver ones, not compared it to them. So I can only speak on what I found. And for the money, I think it's so hard to beat. I think you're getting an awful lot of pole for your money with this. So if you are a 16 meter guy, go for something more expensive. If that is important to you and you are fishing 16 meters every single week, it is worth spending the extra money. But if you're like me and you don't, I don't, I don't think it's worth it. I just genuinely don't. Unless you like really nice things, of course, if you've got the money and you love to have the best of the best, then don't get this pole. You, you, you'll want a Daiwa or a X90 or a Maver RXX or whatever it is that you what tickles your fancy. Um, there are better poles than this if you are that guy. But if like me, you just want something that is well balanced, light, more than stiff enough for what I need it to do, then I can't fault it. The butt sections on the XS90, what I had before, um, which was the previous flagship, I used to get an odd hairline crack down the middle of it. I never felt that like the butts were very, very tough. As you can see, I've still got the original butts. They're covered in marks, scratches, you name it. And I've not had any of that problem with this. Whatever they've done to resolve that has worked and I've not had any problems and I've not heard of any problems neither, which is, which is a big one. Robustness has been great. Now, they've got that Jura wrap technology. You can think it's nonsense. You can think it's marketing spiel or whatever, but there is wraps, strengthening wraps on the males and the females of the X70. I think it's from the X50, X70, X90. They've all got these strengthening wraps and it has genuinely worked. I've got one number three, that's showing signs of wear, um, wear and tear. It's the one that's in my pole, so it's the one I'm using every single week. Um, but other than that, the rest of the pole is, is looking good. I'm not one of these who cleans the poles regularly or anything like that. I don't particularly look after my poles and the joints are, are doing well. The only one that's showing any signs of wear is the number three, the short number three, which doesn't have the, the wrap on it. I've got a new one, a, a superior one, and I've got an old one from the response. Um, and both of them don't have that wrap on and both of them, my top kits are going on a long way. So that's one of the points I'd love pressing to address in the future. If they're gonna do short freeze for the, whatever poles they do next, the next superiums, I'd love for the short freeze to have the same wraps on as, as the, uh, the main poles. So robustness, great. Have I had any breakages? No. Um, I've had a number five where I had a particularly awkward peg at Lindome. I think I did the live match on it. I had two in a row where I had to keep breaking down on my number five and I crunched it in my hand. And it was total user error. I had a fish going off, I broke down, I was holding it with one hand and it, I could just feel it going in my hand. It didn't crack through, I've still got it, I taped it up for now, I'll probably get it repaired and keep using it. Uh, but I did get a replacement section for that, but not had any problems. No breakages, no cracks, nothing. And I'm fishing every week now. Granted, it hasn't had the same amount of use as say Matty Dawes would give it, but for me, I think I'm pretty, I'm using it, what you guys use it, and I'm, I'm so happy with its strength and reliability. It's been really good. I can't fault it. I'm really finding it hard to fault. Like I said, a 16 meter performance would be the only drawback for me, but you've got to be realistic to what you can expect with a pole like this. The package is great. I think there's probably better packages now. Um, things I would like to see. Uh, I use the 
uh, carp kits for pretty much all of my, my fishing, superior carp kits. Um, I felt like the response ones were better. I felt like they were stiffer. They had a slightly different taper on this section, and I mean slightly, and I felt that they were stiffer. But having used both now for a long time, I don't actually think that's the case anymore. Uh, and I'm more than happy with the carp ones. I think they're great. Um, I've spoke about this before. I, I chop them back. I put um, two bushes in so I can use a nice little bead. They're just new fish ones. I forget the exact um, diameter of them, them bushes, but it's one of the big ones. I think it's a 4.8, and then I use another one inside it. Just allows me to use a shorter bush. I like my top kits to be really stiff, and I just think that cutting them back a little bit more makes, helps them do that. I just I love how my elastic runs when my top kits are super stiff, but they they're more than good enough straight out of the packet. So I think that's a for me. I prefer a thicker top kit, but I, I guarantee most people look at mine and think they're way too way too thick. So. Um, I can't fold top kits and they're good price as well. I think I forget what they are now, they're 60 odd quid, which for a top kit these days, I, I saw Daiwa's recently, their um, new professional kits are over 100 quid now. Um, and I'm sure they're probably much higher grade carbon or something. Um, and there's a reason for it, but I can't, I, I really like these. So for 60 odd quid, I think they're great. The Compre Bush, they've got the roller puller in. What, what's not to like about it? Um, like I say, I use the cart ones nine times out of ten. I don't actually think I've got one of the F1 two-piece top kits. I might have a couple from my old pole, but I'm more than happy with these. F1 kits, as in one-piece F1 kits, I have worn a couple out, I'm not going to lie. Uh, a couple of them uh, have worn out a little bit. Still use them, I've just chopped them back a little bit and, and just use them to go on. And I think that, that combination of that short free without the wrap on and the and the F1 kits, which I don't think I've got the wraps on, they've worn down a little bit. More than usable still, but I'd love to see them somehow resolve that issue for the next poll. So again, the top kits are cheap and cheerful, and maybe that is because of a lack of a wrap. Maybe, I'm not sure. If it were me, I would probably, and it's probably the same with these, I'd probably move the puller up a little bit as well on, on the top kits and the short kits. Um, I'm talking that much. I think it'd probably just line up a little you see there that that's a little bit high a bit low for me i prefer it up here but that's just personal preference i'm sure most guys probably wouldn't even think about that uh what else would i like to see i'd like to see some sort of protection for the end of your pole maybe a little short dolly that's got a nose cone in it or something like that i see what dyer are doing with the lightweight ones i really like that and i think matrix and maver do little um skid bung type ones i think they're a great idea i'd love to have some of them for this and then that leads me on to this beauty, the Superior car. Now, I got this just as I was leaving Preston. It was uh, a bit of an impulse because I went to Medellin's last year and I was fishing with this and I'm fishing on that red sand, you know, that horrible red sand. And I kind of felt like I'm just wearing my pole out for no good reason. I could do with a carp pole. So I got this as a, as A, as a backup. I must admit, for Shearsby Valley, where it's 30 metres and under, I'm just using this every time now. The extra robustness with the sections, when I'm adding sections on in a hurry, when I'm chasing fish out. I just think that the carp pole is a, an absolute gem. And I've got to be honest, I would be, as a punter, I'd be hard pushed to pick either one of them, the carp or the 70. I think if all I was doing was carp fishing, then I would just go with, go with this without a doubt. Because I do a little bit, I don't, granted, I don't do loads of river fishing and stuff, but because I do, I do a bit of that and a bit of F1 fishing, I'd still go for the X70. It's more than strong enough for carp fishing. Um, but if all you are doing is heavy duty carp fishing, then this is the pole. It's amazing. I love it. And it's stiff as well. Even even at 16 metres, it's, it's heavy, but it's stiff. So I find a hard time to pick between the two. I've got to be honest. Um, they're both very, very good poles. Very good poles. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think because Preston sold an absolute boatload of these um, in my time there. They were fantastic sellers. Um, the car, the 70, the 50. So I'm sure a lot of you have had experiences with it. I know when I first did my reviews on these poles, a lot of you got in touch saying they broke fours and fives. Having seen a lot of the comments on like angling for you and stuff, I think a lot of that's probably gone now, ironed out a bit. So. 
I think a lot of people have had good experiences with these poles. And I can speak without a pressing hat on now and say that my experience with these poles has been incredibly positive. So I can't recommend them enough. Will I be changing? I think a lot of people would be like, um, do you fancy a change? I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I must admit, if I had three and a half grand to spend, I would probably buy that Aerity Pro, the new Daiwa. I think I, um, I'm big enough to admit that it tick, really tickles my fancy, that pole, um, that Aerity Pro. That looks a real bit of me, that does. Strong, stiff, the top kits have been fixed. Because I didn't. I had a Tournament Pro XLS before I joined Preston, and I thought the top kits were really poor. I've got, I've got to say, I didn't like the top kits at all. And the Preston ones were a massive step up, but they've fixed that with the new Pro kits. So I would be super tempted. If I had three and a half grand burning all in my pocket, and I wasn't so deep in with Preston as in, I've got that many spares, I've got that much kit for this, it would be hard to change. It would cost me thousands to change. Um, but that pole, I must admit, it got me tempted. It got me tempted, but I'm going to stick with this. I don't know what the next one will be, uh, whether they're even doing the next one, who knows, I'm sure they are. Um, and I probably would go for the 70 type model again. Whether that would stay the same price, I'm not sure, but that's what I'd look at. Um, I've got to say, I went to Pole Alley, uh, the big one show. I thought the Aventus 900 was amazing. I, I would be seriously checking that out if I was in the pole market to buy a flagship pole. I thought the Maver RXX was beautiful. I thought that was a really nice pole. And like I said, the Aerity Pro would be a bit of me. So I've got options now. I think I'm going to, I am, well, I am going to stick with this because it would just cost me too much money to change. But and I can't, I can't fault these poles. So no rush to change, but that's not saying I won't in the future. And I'm, like I said, that Aerity Pro really did uh, tickle my fancy of a nice bit of pole that. But yeah, if you are in the market for a pole, I know the X70 has been out a couple of years now, but it's a really good pole. And there is an odd one coming up second hand now. So it's worth checking them out if, you, if you're in the market. They're a really good pole and I can't, I can't speak highly enough of them. They've been great and, and the cart one, I love it. So there you go, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you picked up a few little pointers there. Like I say, at 16 meters, it ain't the best. It can't be, it's the price. Um, but all the other lengths, it's amazing. Strength, reliability, robustness, wear and tear have all been great. The top kits are phenomenal. Great price point. I'd love to see um, the F1 one-piece kits sturdied up a bit. Not strength-wise, but just made them a bit more robust because I have worn a couple out. Um, I'd love to see a few other little bits of niceties around it. Um, I, I see like with the Maver package, for example, you get loads of stuff with it. But that's just me being uh, looking from an outsider looking in now. And I know that, um, that for the price, you're getting so much for your money. So there you go. Uh, that's my, I want to say three year review, but certainly two year review of uh, the X70. I can't see me changing anytime soon. Uh, and, and to be honest, if I do, it will be for the next whatever, Superior Mac 2 or whatever they're doing in a couple of years time. So yeah, can't fault it. Thanks everyone for watching and we'll see you again on the next video.